Hi Blues fans, still here backstage at the Moulin Blues Festival 2011 and Bob Corritor is next to me. First of all Bob, congratulations with your Blues Award in the, from the Blues Foundation in America. Uh, yesterday it was I thought. Yeah, it's, uh, it was just uh, the other night. It's hard to say what day it is because I woke up after the Blues Music Awards, I got to the airport and I just came straight here. There's a, like a delay at the airport and then so it's been non-stop. I haven't had sleep for about a day and a half, but I'm having a good time. So I'm living on blues power right now. But it was a wonderful experience to put out the CD, which is such a collaborative effort. It has so many great artists, Nappy Brown, Little Milton, Coco Taylor, Pine Top Perkins, Chico Chisholm. Uh, the list goes on. So many of my dear friends were a part of this CD. And I was such a small part of it in a way because it would have been a spectacular great CD without me. I just happened to be the person that got to put it all together. So it was honored by the Blues Foundation as the best historical record. I'm so happy that they were so kind to acknowledge it that way. And that means that you're, you have your own spot on that list for blue, in the histor history of blues. You know, that is a really spectacular thing. And I'll tell you what, I had a great set. Uh, last night with uh, Willie Big Eyes Smith and Eddie Shaw and uh, David Maxwell, Chris James and Patrick Wren and uh, Jimmy Bott. We had a, a real throwdown band. It was really fun. And then you're, you went on stage with all the blues legends and then you have to travel to Holland to a small place called Ospel in the middle of nowhere and have to do a show for a couple of thousand people who loved what you did on the, on the stage uh, together with Dave Riley. How was it? Are you, are you now tired? Because it was a, a very energetic show. I should be tired, but I don't even know because my adrenaline is still going. There's so much love at this festival, Blues Moose, that I'm having a, a good time. I don't want to leave. I, don't want, I know I probably should get some rest. I should probably do something good for my body. But right now, I'm just enjoying this ride. So how can I not just be here? There's so many great musicians playing. I'm seeing so many of my friends that are musicians I know from back in the States that are here also. So this is a good party. This is a great party. Hey, you're, you're harpist at a harmonica. Um, what triggered you to play that, uh, that instrument and not pick up a guitar or something else? I heard the harmonica. I fell in love with it. It really had such a great sound. I heard it on a Muddy Waters record with Lil Walter playing it. How can you not fall in love with the harmonica? It has the most beautiful sound. It's so much like the human voice, and I just wanted and inspired to play it. So I'm still learning. I've been playing now 40 years, still learning. Still learning? Yes, every day I'm learning new things. How, how do you practice? Well, a lot of times, there's a, a number of ways. Dave Riley and I will get together, we'll work on songs, and we'll find like the sweet spots, the particular notes and arrangements that really make it great. That's one way. But a lot of times I'm just doing my own rehearsing. I'm just ha just hanging out with myself, just exploring the possibilities of, of, of different, different licks and different passages and think about how that would fit into something I might play, a song that's in a repertoire. I try to imagine the song behind me and how I would write on top of that. Yeah, you play with Dave Riley. Um, how, how is he in a, on the stage to cooperate with? Are you, can you follow him blind? Dave, Dave is a wonderful wild man of the blues. You know, I mean, he's just he's a wild card. But at the same time, we have a sound. It's a natural sound. He gets down in that down home blues and E, and that's all she wrote. It's great. And whenever we get in the studio, something really memorable always comes out of it. And it's always spontaneous. We never know exactly what's going to happen, but it always turns out great. Okay. Um, your future in the blues. Uh, what are your plans? Have you uh, any new recordings pl planned or just play, play and play a lot? Well, yeah, but right now there's such a huge momentum. I just produced Mun Morganfield's uh, last record in Chicago. I'm playing on the new Louisiana Red record. I produced half of Diana Greenleaf's record and Diana and uh, Anson Funderburg produce the rest and it's that's going to be a great record that's coming out uh, um, we're working on Amanda's roller coaster a live record from a great show the uh, harmonic show we did at the rhythm room I've got a 20 year anniversary record of the rhythm room that'll be coming out hopefully this year 
and Dave Raleigh and I just completed our third record together. A few, a few items. What's more difficult, producing another one's album or uh, creating your own songs? You know, each one takes everything you got. You can't, you can't halfway do any of that. You just have to go in there and you have to live in those songs. You have to do, do all the post-production. You have to do all the pre-production. You got to make sure those basic tracks are recorded right. You got to make sure that what you end up with is going to make a great record. Well, thanks so far for this interview. We hope you yeah, we enjoy a lot in the future and uh, enjoy your stay. Sell a lot of uh, CDs now. Bluesmiths, thank you so much. You really are, are a great spokesman for the blues. Thank you for taking the time and interest in what I'm doing. And I hope to make you proud with what I, I'll show you in the future. Thank you very much. You're listening to Blues Moose Radio. And this is one of the baddest blues shows around. So check in.